her former puppeteer and educator. Storm is currently pursuing an MFA in theater while touring and performing around the world nationally. Storm uses the power of words to integrate the intersections of race, gender, and sexuality. As a College 10 graduate, we welcome Storm home and once again to our stage. Thomas. Um, I went to school here. Um, I currently live in New York, um, doing my MFA in theater. Um, and I've been performing for a while. Just got started on this campus by these people. Um, and so I am going to share with you um, a series of poems that span from a long time ago to very, very recent. Um, one of the amazing things about poetry that I love is that there really are no rules. You get to write about anything you want to, and you get to be anybody you want to, and you get to express yourself in a way that has never been done before. Every poem you ever write is written like you. Um, so if, as I go through these poems, I can ask something of you, which is to, as you're listening, Show how you feel about the words that I'm saying with your mouth or your body. Make sense? Woo! Similar to that. So if I was like, oh my god, um, compost is the question of button making, you'd be like, come on. No, you'd be like, that's a terrible, that's terrible. You know? Okay, but if I said something great, like something great, you'd be like, Better. You can you can work on it a little bit. I'm gonna just jump. I'm just. I'm gonna. Okay. What's so great about queer sex? Yeah. <laughs> Swear to God, every time I perform that poem, that actually happens everywhere. Always. Somebody's like, woo, in the back. <laughs> What's so great about queer sex? is that it doesn't exist. Okay, what I mean is the words we have, penetration, penetrate, aggressive, passive, can never explain the way we make love. It's, it's limb to limb, in bark and body, she enters me in eyelash and bottom lip on top, each sweat beat to sell, the bars are the words that we use. Can never explain that some of their parts are too weak, understand that our language is too weak. You can needle and point and sew the letters together, mold the lines into fingerprints, sweat into duct tape them pretty, but come on. And on. <laughs> we will never fit into your mason jars. There is a revolution in the way that she touches me. By revolution, I mean movement. I mean back and forth and steady, occupy me. I mean move in. <laughs> Dismantle the tissue that holds in my sex, holds in my sex, hollow me of these words because they don't exist and I love them. Fuck me breaking beehive into body, boy bang to beautiful this skin, battle boom bone into breast because there is a war out there. But it doesn't exist and our boys are out there, but real boys don't exist. These words are just the sum of their parts. If they're too weak, in definition they don't really exist. These words are just the sum of their parts, are too weak in definition so they don't really exist and I love them. A friend of mine tells me that he believes in clocks, but he doesn't believe in time. And I said, that shit don't make no damn fucking sense. <laughs> That's like believing in racism, but not believing in colonization or American empire. You cannot have one without the other, but you better know this friend called me boy, called me he. New to build brick to bold and, and butterfly forget me nots. This is no accidental packer or binder or sunstrip strap on. I don't wear this shit for fun. Come on. And on, we will never fit into your mason jars. What's so beautiful about broken is that we give it. I mean, we move in it. What's so beautiful about the system is that it doesn't exist without our love of these words. We believe in time. 
we can change these words that we believe in time we can change. I don't believe in gender, but I live in its pronouns. So who do you think I am? It doesn't exist. I give in it. I mean, move in it. I mean, occupy me every day. We use bodies to fight against gender. I mean, we use words to fight against the system. You cannot have one without the other can't embody because everything is a binary. Since the beginning of time, since the beginning of mankind, men are the kind that we are taught to think of first, so everything outside of it doesn't exist. We only have words to describe women, weak, faggot, good for burning. We only have words to describe them as what a man is not, so fight. Fuck. I honestly don't know who I am without this fight. I honestly don't know who I am without these words, but she, limb to limb, embarks on my body, and when I scream, words don't exist, and I love. <laughs> are old and some of these poems are new. Some of these poems, well particularly one of these poems, is brand new, never been performed in front of anybody ever. Except for my mirror. Um, this is not that one, but anyway. <clears throat> when I'm not caught up, I remember to tell people the moment they flutter lash in my belly, butterflies like homegrown daydreams that we all pretend are hollow, I remember, I remember to tell them two things. One, I refuse to write love poems. Two, I will not go to the beach if I can help. Both are too easy to fall into. Both leave you choking for something that may never come and crash is imminent. It must have been because I was hell-bent on keeping one foot in the arms of the girl before, but God, how I felt. Way before falling, seeped into poems across the country, followed with words like scraping and scars and knees wet with what we're taught we must give to feel I fell for her and him to her. The way she smiled when we were both pretending that no one was looking. Her hands on my chest, draping my skin in the shape of my choosing, when days would pass by in the gentle rocking of Ikea furniture and John Legend, and I'm doing it again. <laughs> and it and you and I were a problem. You were the first to call me he and mean it, and mean it. I promised to touch every inch of your body and mean it, and mean it, and I did, until I forgot and you taught me again, and I'm doing it again. One, I do not write love poems. Two, I will not go to the beach if I can help it, cause I know poets. They can be grave robbers in skinny jeans and tightly choreographed tear ducts. They can be cancer, they can be shop talk, like do anything for new growth, no matter what it kills in the process. We are and I am often researching instead of hearing, like looking original instead of just looking, and dying to be loved for all of the wrong reasons. She and I were proper love before words. And after proper love, there are always symptoms. Tick bites and bruising, tally marks and all the places you let them inside, just flesh sacrifices to make sure your agreements stay in their place. I will not write love poems and cannot go to the ocean. I can never again lie myself down into language without the scent of her. Cannot mention ocean and not think of her. And I fell and I fell into this trap I eloquently wrote myself into. So now, when some other smell and smile sits across from me and asks me to make them a beautiful thing, they must settle for a glass of water. I will taste you on her lips and I will not go to the beach when she asks. Mm -hmm. Funny thing about doing a poetry show, it's like one of the most personal things with the most strangers ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> um, this next poem that I'm gonna perform, this next poem that I'm gonna perform, um, I wrote maybe a year ago, um, and it is to my brother, who I love dearly. This past week was um, the second anniversary of his passing, the second year, um, and so please listen and share space with me while I perform this poem. Mm -hmm. 
parts. <laughs> You are the hole in my spine. I dare not stand as straight and as strong as I used to now that you are gone. I do not have the gall to forget how you were the lining in my jawbone. The dark matter in my heart calls out your name. The extra distance I am finding in my neck these days is nothing but the haunting of you, my brother. The amalgamation of war and skin and sinew forgot that he lived in gravity mistook himself for a wind chime and fought one last time against what this world told him he could not be weightless. And I look just like him. I fold in my chest to the outline of his. I carry him in the ridge of my knuckles. Our hands have the same muscle memory, so this tie around my neck will be nothing but the extension of my collarbone into flight. See, it wasn't the shirt. He tied together two blocks away from his favorite bar, full of stained glass friends. It was the gravity that killed him. And the thing about gravity is that it pulls on us by our mass, and we both lived heavy. We both lived all too heavy in our names. We both, young, black, queer, and breaking, lived heavy. I have never hated my blood as much as watching my sister have to decompose onto your body. I want to seep into the marrow and watch nature reproduce your babble, you asshole, you drunk, you piece of shit cancer, eating me alive, you are eating me alive, so I hate you. I mean, I miss you. I despise the worms that are dining on your flesh that you are being tasted again without your consent. You and I, we have always had so much in common. I guess nothing in this world ever dies. Everything in this world comes full circle. It has to be caught in something else's throat first that you are being tasted again without your consent. You and I, we have always had so much in common. History must have something to do with it. Our deep tissue is both nigger and cracker, so it's a wonder you slaved away at finding the perfect way to string yourself up for freedom. How dare you, black man, choose to die by the rope to taste the nigger in your teeth. I guess nothing in this world ever dies. I guess everything in this world comes full circle and has to get caught around someone else's throat first, Ken. Mm. The last time you spoke, you asked me if I was proud of you. Don't you know that all I've ever wanted to be is just like you, so instead, Gravity, I will call you murder. You Benedict Arnold, promising me stability and giving nothing but the pulling of my veins. I will call you silence to a lamb and wonder if Kenneth was just trusting you. The thought of him leaving on his own is just too heavy. It's been weighing me down these days and I have always wanted to follow in his footsteps. Mm. involved in putting on this conference, both in the past and the future. Um, this conference is exactly what it says it is. And conferences aren't usually that. <laughs> you go to conferences and they're like, oh my god, this is a conference about um, podiums. And really, you actually you talk about what a podium looks like, but you don't talk about how to build it, what to do with it, what do you do with it, when you stop using it, how do you recycle it. Everything about a podium that you need to know, you don't know, but you do this conference. Practical activism is not that. Um, I have been a part of it, around it, near it, all my friends in it since I got to this college and I have grown to love it as one of my favorite conferences I've ever been a part of. So hats off to every organizer, including Wendy, including the two student organizers who are leading, every single person here, phenomenal. And one of the things that I like the most about it is that they often, slash always, I mean always, have a spoken word performance artist thing. And the reason why I love that is because it is so practical. You know what I mean? I'm like, if you are an activist, you need to act, right? And it is, but we don't know what that is, so we're just gonna act. <laughs> right? And one of the simplest and easiest and cheapest ways to act is to speak. So thank you and give it up. Um, this is also a poem that has never been performed before. Can everybody hear me? Yes. 
Do you want me to be closer like this? <laughs> That's good? That's good? Okay. I'll just eat it then. <laughs> um, it's short. I think it's nice. Tell me, tell me after. <laughs> A good pair of shoes never lasts forever. I gotta get new. Um, <laughs> A good pair of shoes never lasts forever. They always wear away in the same place, like the corner between the big toe and the first lump of foot. That's name, that name that is never remembered when you need it to. And the morning after is just like the memory of an orange. It lingers on the tongue. It bites back, but just the tip. The places where the past find their way to the surface and its name is never spoken. So remember, it is like the moment when you forget you are holding hands with someone else because your temperature is the same. Like old shoes before the hole goes clean through to the bone. How are we on time? I got time. <laughs> Thanks. me I was pretty. Used to comb out my giggles and paint my smiles into stained glass. A woman's hair is her glory. That's what he would spark into the bowl in front of me, now on fire, so how dare I ask her to name me brother. She who was drank of the same inferno, had each hand-picked rib crack and fall under the weight of the flames. Her hair is straight now. But it's still almost impossible to comb the kink out of her smile, dark and messy. Daddy says she's beautiful. So she sways her metronome hips like time machines, trying to find her way back to the storybooks that were once read to us, Genesis and Exodus, dark and messy. Does she notice me trying to fold myself into the softest parts of her shadow on days when it's time for sacrifice? My blood taught me to laugh invisible. Shh, he tells me now. You are breaking too loudly when you walk, all yearning in story like that. Take off that tie, or you are not welcome in this house. A woman's hair is her floor. So I cut that curl brace into dust. I don't want that kind of righteous anymore. I don't want that kind of strength. So I stand here now, Samson Stone. And I know I could break him. Call him, fall him into both jawbone and dust. Show him how he is weapon and aftermath. I miss the days that he would call me anything but Leviticus and Romans. I am scripture and New Testament to the strength of a family. Once taught, we were made in the image of a limestone. She, my sister, Heather, my soulmate, doesn't know how to call me anything different than traitor, than woman. And the history books forgot about us. The Bible did mention us. Not even once, or men like me. <laughs> um, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, told me once, or asked me, she was a poet, and she said, "I feel bad because I've like written about the same thing like every poem." And I was like, "Where?" That's rough. Um, but I also got it together and also said um, that one of the things that is also so beautiful about poetry um, is that you can, you can never look at the same object in the same way, twice. Every poem that you write, even if you write every poem about your shoes, they will always be different. And everything about that shoe that comes out in every different poem is so much a part of that shoe. And the same thing is true for identity. Um, I end up writing or performing a lot of poems that have to do with 
my gender identity and race. Um, and I don't feel bad about it at all because I'm like, it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, in addition, it, it changes over time. And to have a, a stamp of what you felt and what you thought at a particular time is, is invaluable. Um, so this poem that I'm going to write is, or I already read it. Um, this poem that I'm going to say now is fresh, just brand new. Um, and I realized coming back here and standing in the same places, how much I have grown and how much I have changed with my gender identity over time, and how important that is, and how we need to leave space for that. In, within everybody, um, not just trans people, everybody's gender identity changes over time. Um, so, it's new. You ready? Yeah. Oh no. To whom it may concern, this is my letter of resignation, of unresisting acceptance of submission, because it's been way too long since I wanted to create anything beautiful. It's been way too long since I started sacrificing great ideas at the altar of death just to pretend like I had a handle on my morning, on mornings like these. I have to remind myself not to forget how the pouring out of self onto the page must be for the best, must be art, must be the stretching out of nails, to, to, stretching out of wrists to accept the nails to create, must be godlike, must be exhale, must be growth, must cost you something. Don't forget to spend of yourself and don't forget to invest in someone else. And right now, I got it all worked out. Swim. Right now, I can fetter through every image I've created myself into on purpose list better still than the limits propagated by false concepts of true self and worthlessness and none of that made any senselessness must be art, must be godlike, must be exhale, must be growing bigger breasts than my age because my binders don't seem to fit in. I don't like to wear them riddles like finders, keepers, action figure, fighter. Maybe it's because I like skittles and long walks at night. Maybe it's because I've always wanted to go to Florida. Maybe it's because I promised my sister, Heather, that I would not abandon her, and whether I like to admit it, some outfits in my closet make me 16 times more likely to be murdered than my aunts and uncles. Must call it kill it sweat. Must call it taking my life back when it's turned. Learn that probable parable early, so maybe I don't like to wear my binders because of a formidable fear of death that has locked itself into my throat and taking to calling itself Kenneth, AKA smoke, and I've been trying to quit. Because I don't think my lung, my tongues are going to be able to make it the way memories have begun metastasizing amidst the tragedy of self. Tragedy of self must be exhale, must be God, must be art like if I pray. Mm. Except for maybe that's not what's really going on at all. Maybe my binder, my binders never actually did fit. They always did feel a little tight. Mm. <laughs> maybe I think it's the reason why I have this fungus growing all over my skin in the right light it looks like muscle. Sometimes identity just feels like the long con, the hustle. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then thank God for good people and good liars. Because right now, I got it all worked out. Right now, it's so clear. I should have never opened up my mouth and told anyone who I am. Should have never, should have never opened up my mouth to define this body. God, that's so real though. I should have never opened up my mouth to define this body. Should have never given her my heart, at least not the real one. Should have never made women my hobby. I love you. I'm lying. That was a joke. Why aren't you laughing? Mm. Why aren't you laughing? <laughs> uh, that was a joke. Why aren't you laughing? I just told you that I'm dying to be loved. Why is everybody clapping? I get tense for talking about what it's like to be a man, but I still have to answer to my father, who I have loved wrong who I will never understand how he still loves me strong and regardless of form, words are risky because they last so long, it's like they're statues in the storm and some words stand their ground in my gut. They have 10 fingers wrapped around each rib because I made them 
in the image of God, and what God has put together, let no statue put asunder, and let no man put together image, and let no God forget his statue and the other pair of jeans back to the wrong church, or else we'd be stuck with a check and wonder if this culture of self-delusion is truly been man-made. Sincerely. I want to thank you all for being here with me and sharing this space with me. Um, you didn't have to be here, and that's dope. That's your stuff, because you are dope. Okay, so I'm going to share one more poem with you. Aww. No, I mean, I have to. Um, <laughs> why everyone should date a trans man in ten parts. <laughs> One, imagine a man who will never ask you in the middle of an argument if it's your time of the month. It's his time of the month, too. A man who will never throw away your haircuts, but instead smile at the giggle of hair wrapped messy like you on weekend mornings when you just can't seem to get out of bed, he understands. Three, whether it's strap on, strap up, or strap down, when your lips are speaking, he is looking into your eyes for a trans man will stay hard all night long. But he will hold you soft, hand cracking over your left breast because he knows sometimes broken is the strongest place you can be, this man. will never have the same nerve endings and flesh scribbled together, paper airplane sharp, but he will finger paint you all night and teach you how to whistle with no hands. Scratch that. New poem. <laughs> All the reasons why I love her in one part, she doesn't need this poem to understand. Thank you all very much for coming. I really appreciate it. If you see somebody with a volunteer shirt, hug them. Thank you, Storm, for being here today for an important day of social justice.